be beaming, I be booming down that block. Down that block. Everywhere you go, you know they know I'm hot. Hey yo, what's the deal my good people? Welcome back to the channel. Happy Friday. We done messed around and made it through the week. If this is your first time at the channel, I want to welcome you here. Pull up a seat. Hope you enjoy the content. And before we get into this food, I want to ask that you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell so that you know when new videos are uploaded, when I go live, or schedule a premiere. So, let's get into the food because I am starving. And I really mean it this time. Well, I mean it all the other times too, but you know what I'm saying. So we having some salmon croquettes today. I haven't had these in forever. Very simple, easy to make. Um, and I made some brown rice and I topped it with some sauteed um, and caramelized onions and bell peppers. All right. Let me let y'all get a closer look. So as you can see, to me, these croquettes are like perfectly golden brown. I don't know how they look on your end, but they look delicious. Like they're perfect. And I'm excited. And y'all know I got sweet peppers because I like the crunch and I like the flavor of them too. And I'm about to top this with one of my favorite sauces. This is yellow bird. Yellow bird jalapeno condiment. Have had this on the channel in a while. If this is your first time here, I do try to have different sauces. Um, this is one of my favorite. Again, jalapeno condiment by yellow bird. I know a couple of you of y'all out there have purchased it and y'all seem to like it as much as I do. I did record this in case anybody is interested. You know, if you want to know how to make them, if you've never made them before, I can drop it on the vlog channel if you're interested. But super easy. This meal probably took like mm, 30 minutes to make. Like the prep time and cook time. Y'all want some rice? It is the day after, but I want to take a minute and say happy birthday, Cousin Tasha. Her birthday was yesterday on Thursday. I might even drop a vlog about her birthday. We'll see. You know, sometimes you know how things are going to go. So, as you can see from the title, I'm doing a Q&A. I meant to ask... Um, for some questions a long time ago but I kind of forgot but I did ask the other day and I got some good questions so I'm gonna answer those It's windy, but it's hot. It's actually hot as hell right now. Go another bite. I'm probably going to get into these questions right now because it's a lot of them. I do want to get through all of them. I will say, any question that's like geared towards Keela, I'm not going to answer it because I want to give her a chance to answer or we get a chance to answer them together. So I'll wait until she comes back on the channel. We'll do another Q&A, so I'll save it for then, all right? So don't worry, your question will be answered. All right, so let's get this thing started. Um, are you bilingual? I am not. I only speak English. But I wish I spoke Spanish and I wish I spoke French. What countries have you traveled to? I have traveled to Cuba, Mexico, Panama, and Belize. All beautiful places. Hmm. If you only had 24 hours to live, what would you do? Hmm, that's a good question. I would get everybody that I know and love together, have a big ass block party, we play whatever we want, drink whatever we want, eat whatever we want, and just have a, get, have a great time. And I would want the dopest camera in the world to record everything so that that video could live on forever. And everybody know that I lived my life fully, that I was loved, and I, and I loved to love other people, you know? So that's what I would do. I would go out with a bang on top of everybody that I love. When is the last time you paid it forward? That's a good question. 
Um, when we have the rap party, party, when we have the rap party for House of Balls, and shout out to everybody that voted for House of Balls, guys, we are on to the next round. Whoa, 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 we on to the next round. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. When we have the rap party for House of Balls, um, I talked to one of the actors, you know, during the party. She's also a writer, and she was telling me something about, you know, getting ready to get back into writing. And, you know, she was talking about Final Draft, and Final Draft is like the industry standard uh, for writing scripts. And this software can be expensive. I recently bought Final Draft, and when you do, they give you two downloads. And it was on my heart to just give it to her. So I offered her my second download. You know what I mean? I didn't keep it to myself. I paid it for it to her so that she can get back to writing and get her projects done. Do you carry? And if so, are you an open carry or concealed? I don't carry. Um, I don't think I ever would. That answer could totally change, but at this point, I don't think I would. Carrot cake or chocolate cake? The answer I'm going to go with is carrot cake. But if my grandmother was living, I would say chocolate cake. My grandmother made the best chocolate cake, and it was always moist. Chocolate cake would be hit or miss to me, so I'm going to go with carrot cake. How old are you? 38 years young. 39 in February. February 10th to be exact, y'all. What do I do for a living? I did answer this in the first uh, round of Q&A questions, but I'll answer it again. I do work in healthcare. I'm a trainer at a hospital. And I'm also a writer and a producer. How do your exes feel about you talking about them during story time? I don't talk to any of my exes. And I don't know if they'd be mad or not. I mean, I'm not sure. Um, but I didn't feel like I needed to hold back my story because they were a part of my story. Um, yeah, so I encourage anybody out there that want to tell their story to tell it. Um, I know a lot of us can remain silent because we want to protect other people and all that kind of stuff. But I feel like if you're not humiliating someone and you're being honest, you're telling your truth, then that's okay. So I don't know how they feel. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. How long has it been since you haven't eaten meat? I haven't eaten meat in like two and a half months. And I don't miss it. I've been holding steady with seafood, eating more vegetables. You know, I've been exploring more in the kitchen, being more creative and stuff. So I don't really miss it. What's your dream vacation? The place at the top of my list, you guys, is Barcelona, Spain. I fell in love with Barcelona, Spain um, during the Olympics. If I'm not mistaken, the 96 Olympics. Um, but I know in Barcelona, Spain, you know, I can get the best of all the worlds. You know what I'm saying? I can get culture. I can get the beach. I can get really good wine. I can get good food, music, dancing. It just sounds like an amazing time. So that's my, my ideal vacation. says where would you reside other than california i could see myself living in i could see myself part-time living in like maybe like like brooklyn and part-time in belize like spend half of the year in belize half the year in brooklyn i don't know i feel like it would i would get everything i need i get the beach in belize i get great food i get a really chill vibe out there some good music as well and then i go to new york and get everything i need in terms of creativity um the arts, you know, film, all kind of stuff I would get. So I, I would have to choose both of those areas. If you could change anything in the world, what would it be? I mean, I'm sure it's a lot of things, but the first thing that comes to mind is the perception of women. The perception that we're not strong, 
the respect, I mean, the, the, the perception that we're inferior, that we're less than, that got to go. That got to get out the window. I don't even see how you can look down on somebody that pushes a child out of their vagina. You know how strong you got to be to do that? Like, think about it. You know what I'm saying? So, just the perception of women. And I feel like other women have adopted that, you know, think that inferior mindset. And look down on other women or think that women can't do a job. So, that's it. Well, that's not it, but that's my answer. Um, as an Aquarius, what is my number one pet peeve? I think from an Aquarius perspective, I can't stand people who are inconsiderate. Just being flat out inconsiderate of other people, you know, where you're when you do something inconsiderate, it, it spirals out of control, it inconveniences other people, it interrupts their life. I hate people who aren't considerate. I'm talking about like obvious consideration as well. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying going out your way to do something, but you know, consideration. What impact do you want to leave on the world? Um, I want to just be known as somebody who was willing to be of service to others. Um, because I find a great joy and I find it very rewarding to look out for other people. I learn a lot about myself. I become more open-minded. Um, I remove a lot of barriers by connecting with other people and doing stuff for them. Um, and you also become rewarded. You get you gain so much by being of service, you know, so that's what I wanted my impact to be, that Rhonda was not a selfish person, I was selfless, and that I had a chance to connect with people. That, that would be really important to me. I think connection is super duper important. How do you ignore the negativity and keep it pushing? It's a good question. Up against <laughs> all kind of stuff that's, that's negative. Um, but for me, I keep it pushing because, uh, I mean, everything that's been said, I've already said it to myself. I've been really mean to myself at certain points in my life, you know, and I was depressed or whatever I was going through. So there's really nothing, nobody could match what I've said to myself. You know, I've settled in my life. I've done all of those things where I really just dug myself into a hole. So I've been there, done that. Nobody can outdo the things that I've done to myself. So I just keep it pushing and just try to focus on the positive, you know? Um... Next question is, where do you draw your inspiration from? I know it may seem kind of cliche, but literally anything can inspire me. You hear the kids playing behind me? Something like that will take me back to my childhood and inspire me to go write a short story. Like it triggers something in my mind. So really anything, music, conversations, laughter, other stories, being at work. Like when you, I'm just super creative, so I just take it all in, I absorb it. And I'll take it in. And if it triggers something in me, I'll create something. So that's kind of how I draw my inspiration. I, it's kind of just random. What helps you get into your creative mode? <laughs> um, I would say candles are really important for me. Candles, chapstick, jazz music, and uh, a bottle of red wine. Cabernet Sauvignon is my favorite to be exact, but... When those things are together, I start getting into a zone, you guys, and I can just write and write and write and write and write. And jazz music, I love it, especially, you know, just the instrumentation. Because when I hear lyrics, the lyrics start to distract me on music, and I want to party and turn up and have a good time and, you know, recite the lyrics. So jazz helps keep me grounded. What are your superpowers? I'm going to have to go with communication and empathy. Uh, I majored in communications in school, so I think that I really do a good job with getting my point across and also being able to hear other people talk and for me to talk to, to listen instead of responding. So I really try to communicate well and effectively. I like to be an effective communicator. I don't like to just waste a whole bunch of time going back and forth about stuff. Um, and empathy. You know, empathy, I, I think I really have a, a, I do a good job at putting myself in somebody else's shoes, trying to be understanding, trying to relate. Um, that really works out in my favor for the most part. So I'm not saying I've always been perfect at it, but I do try. So I got to go with those as my superpowers. Um, do I have a meet and greet planned? If so, when? Let's see. When I went live this past Monday, um, we talked about this. And my birthday is February 10th. 
and Atlanta seemed like a good location where a lot of you are in the area and can either either you're in Atlanta or you're in the area and can drive to Atlanta and we'd be able to meet up so I'm thinking about maybe in February you know what y'all think let me know um other than that I'm I would I'm but plan an LA one at some point but I don't know if there's a lot of LA folks you know so y'all let me know if there's some LA folks out there maybe we can do something soon um but like I said Atlanta is on the list of a possibility in February for my birthday. Maybe I'll come out there and celebrate with you guys and we do something uh, fun together. How do you feel about not having siblings? Was it lonely growing up? I guess I can't miss it because I never had it. Um, but it was never lonely. I always had a lot of cousins. I lived in the neighborhood with a lot of friends. I've never felt lonely, honestly. And I, I'm grateful for that. Um, you know, when we, me and my parents did stuff together, went on a cruise or went to Vegas or did stuff or, you know, wherever we had planned for our fam our media family, for our, our household, I was always able to bring somebody with me. So I'd bring a friend, bring a cousin, that kind of thing. If a genie offered you one wish and, and you can invite one person to dinner, who would it be? This person could be dead or alive. Y'all, I'm gonna have to go with my grandmother. I'm going to have to go with my grandmother. My grandmother was very special to me. Um, I would love to just sit and hear her laugh. I would love to hit, hear, sit and hear her, you know, tell her stories that she would always sit and tell us. And also, if I'm, you know, I would get a chance to finally get all of her recipes. I would love to be able to make my cook exactly how my grandmother cooks and pass that tradition down. So I would choose my grandmother. Those are all the questions. Um, and like I said, the, the ones that were aimed at Keela and I together or Keela on her own, they will be answered when she comes back on the channel. I want her to be able to give her peace. Um, so I'm going to wrap this thing on up. Um, I will say today is Friday. I know what time it is. If this is your first time at the channel, on Fridays at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we have family night. I go live. Everybody comes through. We chill out. We talk. We laugh. Sometimes we cry, depending on what comes up in the conversation. Everybody is welcome. It's a safe space. Um, so please come through if you are available. Um, the vlog channel, please check it out. The link is in the description below. I'm trying to keep that channel active as well. Um, I'll be back in a few days. So all I ask of you is please be good to yourself. Peace. I be beaming, I be booming down that block. Down that block. Everywhere you go, you know they know I'm hot.